Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is our former Hawaii governor who was very successful for his two terms. He is Governor John Waihe'e, and today we are going beyond leadership. Hey, oh. Governor John, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, that's a very intimidating uh, introduction, uh, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> Well, you've know. done a lot of great know. things. I don't know if we can all live up to it, but I'm so happy to be here. And uh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you know, it's well, it's Governor see, John, uh, yes, you know, you, you really shaped, I mean, as governor for since 1986 to 1994, I mean, you really was pivotal, pivotal in really shaping uh, Hawaii and but I want to I want to ask you if you can share about your early years growing up. Well, I grew up on the Big Island. I grew up in uh, in a town called Honoka'a, which is halfway between Hilo and Kona. And what you had then was you had you know sort of the big city on the Big Island, which was Hilo. Can you imagine? And and Kona, which was the tourist destination. So I grew up right in the center of the plantation culture. And it was, uh, you know, uh, it was a wonderful uh, childhood. I, I don't know how else to say it. And it was a sense of community, a sense of uh, many of the things that we now consider special about Hawaii, except back then we just took it for granted. You know, we didn't have to work on it. So yeah, that's uh, growing up in Hawaii. And my parents, um, yeah, I had three sisters and they, you know, we, I can't can't tell you enough about it uh, in the, in, without taking the rest of your show. <laughs> <laughs> now, Governor John, you you also went to UH Law School, is that correct? Yeah, I went to law school. It's really interesting because um, when I was growing up, uh, you know, uh, my my dad constantly talked to me about you know gotta go to college got to do something and he had this he had this mindset of i was going to be uh you know uh, a doctor he, that was in his mind what was special and yet uh as we as i was growing up you know the whole medical profession thing didn't really appeal to me so what I secretly want to be was a cowboy, you know, <laughs> working on the ranch and doing that kind of thing. But I had to come up with something. So what I noticed was as I was sitting around the table, I was very fortunate because for some reason, adults let me sit in on their conversations as they were talking about things, when I, which was not usual uh, for most young, young kids, you know? And, and, and so I would listen. And my, my, they, these, uh, my relatives, my dad would be talking about all the various problems Native Hawaiians felt uh, faced over the years or people in the community or whatever. And they would always talk about how they really needed a lawyer. I, I had no idea what that entailed, but I got an instant that that's what I gotta be because that's what they talk about. So I started, you know, saying that. And, and, and soon I started to really, you know, want to become that, I, I don't know, and, and so forth. And yet, so anyway, I went off to school in Michigan. And the reason why I ended up at the UH Law School was because I actually got uh, accepted and I was going to law school in, in, in George, uh, Georgetown University, which my daughter ends up eventually attending, but I was going to go to law school. And I got a, um, I got a, I was working at that time in the inner city. And so I had an occupational deferment from being drafted to the uh, Vietnam War. And then I got a call immediately after my acceptance letter. If you go to law school, we're going to draft you, but don't worry, we'll hold the seat for you. And I said, oh man, you know, so I didn't do that, came home, started working. And one day, 
friend of mine came in and he says, hey, they're looking for people, local kids to go to law school. They just opened up a law school that buy here. That's fun. And it was a, it was a great experience. Um, well, that that's interesting. You know, I, I like hearing the beginnings of, you know, like you're growing up and then just really how, you know, you became an attorney. And then I, I think that's a great benefit um, to have that background. Uh, when yeah, you it, a governor, it, it right? is. It, it, it is. And, and to, be, to be a lawyer and be governor. Yeah, and, and it is. And, and the biggest. The, so one of the one of the things. That, that happens with, with people is is that sometimes people get intimidated by uh, professions that they're not a part of, you know. And, and so you can see that a, a lot of times. For example, when I became governor, one of the key positions was the Department of Transportation. You know? And so if you, and one of the th things about that was if you're not an engineer, how do you deal with engineers, you know, that are constantly there? Where, where do you know how to lead them? And, you know, it's all that kind of thing. And there's a tendency sometimes for people in, uh, in, public, in public affairs in business, to get intimidated by lawyers. So the best thing about being a lawyer is you don't get intimidated by a bunch of other lawyers because you know they don't know any more than you do, you know? And that, and that helps to make decisions, you know. I wish I felt the same way about my doctors, but I don't. I get intimidated every time I walk in their office. Oh. Uh, yeah, so being a lawyer kind of helps. It helps because, you know, a lot of what you do needs to be cross-checked legally and the rest of it. But, you, can, you, you know, what I, I, what I enjoy doing was uh, telling them, well, I, I tell this to now to a lot of young lawyers, if you can't, if you can't find an ethical, moral, and legal reason to tell your client, yes, he needs another lawyer and you need another client. <laughs> and and, and not, you're not there to, you're not the judge. You're not there to, you know, uh, to, to rule on anything. You're there to try and accomplish an objective. Unfortunately, a lot of people think that their job is to stop something from happening. No, that makes sense, Governor John. And and Governor John, take me back to that day when you were walking with First Lady Lynn to your inauguration at Yolani Palace. What were you thinking, you know, during that day? And what were some of the goals that you wanted to achieve? Well, I, I tell you, well, first of all, I, I'm, the picture's not in color. But the first thing that happened was that my wife was wearing this red suit. And she looked fantastic, and, and she was just uh, outstanding. And I remember thinking that. And then, uh, and then as we walked, it, and it, it was kind of an interesting day because, you know, the, the thing about being a lawyer, I mean, being a governor, that's different from a lot of other political positions. A governor and mayor, uh, we share this, is that the second you say, I do, <laughs> you know, I, whatever. Everything comes down on you. the authority of the office, the person, everything will come down. If you're in the legislative branch, you usually have to develop a little bit of seniority. You have to deal with other people. But in our three tripod form of government, the, the, you know, the legislative, executive, and judicial branches and the executive branch this, it all happens in a second. And so what you're thinking about it, and not so much when I became governor, actually when I became lieutenant governor, I remember the day after I got elected, I, I was wondering, what do I do now? You know, Well, by the time I got to be governor, I, I had things, I'd spend a month, you know, and, and some time working on. So housing became an issue. Native Hawaiian affairs became an issue. Completing the agenda, that we started in the 1978 Constitutional Convention became a very tight priority. And, and, and if you read our current constitution, it's still in many ways the, the, uh, the outline of an agenda for, for the state government. And it uh, you know, talked about preserving Hawaii's, Hawaii's specialness uh, and, uh, and, and therefore treating its land in a different way, dealing with people, accepting the fact that we are uh, living on an island, 
as opposed to Kantani. I, I often say this. If you, the, good, the wonderful thing about Hawaii is that, well, you know, the foundation of Hawaii is that if you don't like your neighbor, tough luck. <laughs> you better get along. Because yeah, where are you going to go? You know, it's not like you live on the, on a continent and you can just go west, young man, you know, do all of that. So we all kind of got to get along and live with each other. And, you know, that's, uh, in a way, that's a kind of a follow-up on your first question, which is what what growing up on the, on the big island was all about. It was people helping people, living together, and, you know, we never talked about the Aloha spirit because everybody assumed that everybody else would be living. You know, it's a kind of different uh, variation. Well, I, I like hearing these insights, Governor John. And, you know, there's only a few select people through these years that have been elected governor of the state of Hawaii. And so you're in a very exclusive group, but can you share um, some of the in, just, just more insights about how you felt as governor in the office. I mean, with the public eye and various stresses that you have to deal with. Well, I, I guess everybody, you know, had their own uh, way of dealing with the, the stress and so forth. Their, their offices had their own put their own touch on the office, but all of us, and there's soon to be six of us walking around. You know, the brand. <laughs> The former governor brand has sort of, you know, it's uh, it's not as um, it's not as high, it's not as profitable as it used to be because <laughs> there's so many of them. But the one thing, you know, so everybody had their, their own approach and their own characteristics. All of us, we all, after all, individuals. But the one thing we all have in common is precisely that that there aren't very many people that went through the experience that we went through. And so, you know, to a certain extent, there's always kind of a governor's club, just like there is kind of a president's club. Well, except maybe not as much for the past president. He's not in any club. But, you know, I mean, but for most governors and past presidents, because they understand, you understand what it is that they're going through. And when, you, when you're on, on this side, of the chair, but as a citizen, you're usually talking to a governor as a, as a um, uh, advocating, as an advocate for something, what you feel ought to be done, how you ought to do it, or how it's being done, you know, all of this stuff. When you're a governor, you, you what you're doing is you're hearing that from everybody. And what you mostly, you know, you end up, you start your, your, your uh, you start your term wanting to, do all of these great things and, and you start out and you do it. You end your term by appreciating the place where you are. I mean it's hard to it's hard for people to you know understand quite what I'm saying, but you you really doesn't matter who it is that occupies that seat, you end your term with a great deal of love for Hawaii. And for its people and for what makes it special. Now we might all have different ideas of how uh, things can be better, but I don't think any of us uh, is any different when it comes to uh, ending up appreciating the people and the place and just being part of Hawaii. And I, I say this, if you're gonna be in politics, for me, the best job in the country, not the world, is being governor of Hawaii. I don't care what the crisis is on, because one thing, um, you know, no matter how bad we have it here, somebody else has got it worse, number one. And number two, we might not have all the great people that we have. <laughs> all the great history you know this is a wonderful place to be and that is something i think every governor appreciates which means that when we when we meet even if we have completely different ideas about what how to be done it's easy to communicate uh, because of that kind of mutual respect governor john i love hearing this and 
your son, John the Fourth, is one of my longtime friends, and he's been an OHA trustee for many, many years now. Now, why do you think he is such a highly respected uh, OHA trustee for so many years now? Well, you, you ought to realize that when you say that to a parent, it's very flattering because in a, you know, a left-handed way, it's sort of a compliment. <laughs> but, you know, we never know. We, we, we never get to appreciate our own children sometimes until uh, we're in the situation, we're put in the situation where we go, wow, that's my kid, you know, that's my son. And I have had uh, moments like that when I'm sitting in these OHA meetings. And, you know, John is kind of an interesting person because he's not somebody that uh, relishes talking at least not in meetings and so forth. So most of the time he, he's sort of quiet, but when he does say things, uh, people realize, uh, including his parents, and, and that, that this is a person who actually uh, thought through the subject, thought through whatever it is, you know? And, and he's sort of, he's got his own weird sense of humor, but I never thought he would become uh, an all trustee. I never thought he'd become a politician. The first time he had to hold signs for me, he, 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 you know, he, he wasn't petrified. He wasn't scared as much as he was just disgusted that he had to be there, you know? So he was holding his sign and kind of looking up. So he, he's not a, you know, it's not what you would call the world's most uh, dedicated campaigner. Uh, his sister was, you know, much more enthusiastic. But, but and, and and this is my son. Now, to give you an insight about my son, you know, I, I said, hey, he heard that I was going to be on the show this morning. So I told him. And he said, hey, did you fix your bed? I said, what? He says, hey, yeah. When Presley says one thing, he says, you you want a sense of accomplishment? Start by fixing your bed. You know, and it was so funny. And this is a little bit about your book. You know, it's so funny because. Later on that morning, his mom walked into the room, uh, and, uh, and and I she, he, and I told her, and he she said the same thing. She you want to feel good, fix the bed, you know. <laughs> so somehow, uh, maybe he's a great trustee because he's uh, taking a little bit of your advice into his work. I don't I don't know, but uh, yeah, they both told me about fixing the bed. <laughs> No, that's so funny because, you, you know, you and First Lady Lynn both, you know, have both of my books. And I want to talk to you about that a little bit here. Um, and you're right. You know, I always say the first thing that happens in the morning is when the alarm get, goes off, wake up. The second thing, make your bed. And and I'm so happy that John the Fourth is, uh, is doing that yeah, and he's telling that to you. I, I, you know, I, I told you, I've read through your book, and, and there's so, I really like a lot of things about it. But I never quite got stuck on that, except I know that you talk about discipline and so forth, and, you know, getting things done and sick. And, 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 but then I thought to myself, you know, when you grow up, what do you tell your kids? I mean, the way you get them to become organized, to start their days, to, was, you know, and you usually do it by going, fix the bed. You never fixed the bed yet, you know, like that. And here he's talking about it, but it was a, a new twist. You say, you want to feel like you accomplished something, at least one thing in the day, start with fixing the bed. You know, I guess getting up would be the first thing, but start with fixing the bed. He said, you do that, Dan, and you know that you at least did one good thing. In the day. Jo Governor John, do you have my book right there with you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 you know, and actually, it's interesting because you uh, signed the book, but this is actually a book from my son. This is actually a gift from my son to me, uh, from you. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Now, what so you mentioned discipline. What what are some things that stood out to you in the books? What well, what I like about the book. And, and, uh, it is, uh, and I, you know, and if people haven't read it, they really should. I, I mean, I, I know that, you know, I'm giving a plug to a fellow think that host, and, and that's, uh, I like to do that, but they really ought to, because what I personally like about the book is all your little quotation marks. And then you spend a chapter like working on it. 
I mean, it, it goes, I mean, there's like, you know, your four purposes, and I think it's 13 or something rules, you know, and, and it goes through chapter by chapter. And, 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 and the ch but it's not just, uh, it's not just, uh, so I'm selling your book a little bit, you know, it's not, it's not just talking about the subject matter. You start off with a quotation, uh, you know, like you might be on the right road, but if you stay in one place, you'll get run over, you know, and I think uh, Will Rogers or somebody says that. You start there, you talk about why you need to move forward and keep it, but you seem to have a lot of the chapters with a personal story about one of your athletes or somebody as an expression. So it's good reading. It's well, good people reading. love stories. Oh, oh yeah. It's good reading and it's good stories and, uh, and the quotations. Quotations are very straightforward. And, and I was thinking, this guy actually went out and collected this stuff. This, this is like work. You know? and, and, and you know, in the books, you know, I, I talked that, you know, that I would give my players a lot of the world famous quote of the days. So I, I'm, I'm so happy that you love all those quotes that I talk yeah, about. Yeah, I, I do, because, you know, I like quotes. In fact, I, I you know, I subscribe to quotes. And, but you pick, you know. Oh, this is this is one. This is you know, and the chapter on the four P's of success. A goal without a plan is just a wish. You know, it's that kind of thing. But if you just left it there, we would say, oh yeah, okay, Mother Goose. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, that's a nice, that's a nice statement. We've heard good statement. But then you actually go through a chapter dealing with that in in very uh, readable. Uh, language, you know, and and, and 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 throughout the book, you see examples of that. You know, and, and all this stuff. So, well, yeah. I I want to make all of Hawaii proud, and and I hope that I can make a huge positive impact in in the world. You know, through inspiring people with excellence and hope with the book. Oh, there's a quote about that. Yeah, there's a yeah. quote about that. Someplace in there about you know you might not be able to change the world, but if you change it for one person, you change that person's world. Exactly. And I thought, you know, that's the that's you know, somebody put a lot of thought in getting the quotes because unfortunately, like I said, you know, we all of us they like quotes. We read quotes and we read it in the paper, but we don't actually like put meat into it. Well, like that you. makes me feel so good that you like it. And and Governor John, what would what would you say is the best advice you ever received in your life? <laughs> you know, it, it's like it's it's kind of hard to to like talk about what is the best. I think the best advice is at the moment when you think that you're when you are when you uh, when you're having some kind of doubt. And uh, somebody tells you uh, something that removes removes the doubt whether you're going to do something or not do something, you know. And, and and so that kind of advice, I I I sort of uh, distill it down to what my father used to say: something about if you don't know what to do, do what's right, you know. And uh, and so yeah. And so, you know, I, 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 I was, I, I handle stress very well. I mean, I, you know, what stresses me is not having stress. <laughs> but everybody gets to a moment in time when you don't, you know, you really, really don't know left from right. And uh, yeah. So you just gotta kind of figure out what is the right thing, you know, and, and, and do it. Governor John, I always say that there's never a wrong time to do the right thing, and that you know you can have 99% confidence, but you have 1% doubt, and doubt is a confidence killer. Absolutely, absolutely. And the best advice is to get past that, right? Yeah. Now, I mean, Governor John. Absolutely. When you, you know, as governor, what were some of your biggest, proudest accomplishments? Well, well there are, you know, there were many, and actually they kind of evolved over the years. I, I, you know, I, 
I like the idea that we had a great housing program, for example. And then when I left office, uh, when I left office, the median price of housing dropped. I think, you know, that's, I, had, I don't know if that's ever happened again. Uh, and I think we, we should have it happen. Uh, and, but we, you know, we did a lot of controversial things. I, and we did stuff with the Native Hawaiians that I'm very proud of. My wife told me one time, I remember right, right after I got elected, actually, I think she told me that on the day of the inauguration, now that I think about it, uh, well, we were actually, you know, getting ready to walk the walk that you saw. And she looked around and she said, you know, uh, Dad, you know, if you if you don't if you never get remembered for anything else, you, you better get remembered for helping your people, for helping me. And I thought, well, we're going to do much, we're going to do much better. But she said, well. I just want to tell you. That. So that's my wife telling me that. And um, yeah, so there's a lot of things, you know, it, it can't be the wonderful thing about being in the business of public service is having done the service. I, I don't know how to say that is actually being able to go out and do something and to change something, to make things happen, and to change the trajectory of people's lives. You know? I used to joke about it. I said, the reason why I didn't like practicing law is I rather tinker with society than one person's life. You know, and, and the point being that how many people get an opportunity for doing that? And I tell people, like, if you're not going to run for office, get involved, you know, like participate. I mean, the wonderful thing about a democracy, this is going to sound, and I'm sure it's going to some people are going to think, oh, man, the guys. But the wonderful thing about a democracy is you get a chance, your ability to influence policy, to influence change, to influence something positive happening, uh, the entry, the ticket to that, to doing that is holding a sign. You know, getting involved, campaigning, you know, it's not going through 16 years of education. It's like bringing yourself to the table, you know, and uh, that's, that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful character, although it's important to go, I don't want all the educate all the teachers that I've ever had to say, you know, he said, I, no, the point I'm making is, it's such a low entry, and the results can be so great. Yeah, and Governor John, no, I, I love that, and you know, when you look back at, you know, when you were governor, what would you say was your biggest challenge as governor? I, you, you know, <laughs> my personality is such that, you know, the big stuff never fazed me. You know, what, what, I, what used to drive me crazy is all the little things that, that could have actually been handled. And I think, yeah, you know, there were all these issues. I mean, we had hurricanes, we had this, you know, we had the necessity for housing, but that's what made coming to work fun. You know, right now, I remember some young legislators came to see me one time, you know, and they were saying, they said something like, uh, Governor, aren't you glad you're not governor now? You got all these problems. And so, uh, I tell you what, uh, why are you elected? I mean, that's like being, going into the World Series game in the ninth inning, got, and you're up there and you gotta drive one run in and you say, I don't want to bat. Okay. It's, you ought to be terribly excited that you're living in times that require you to do something great. Not to, I mean, you know, it, it, for me, it would have been boring if life was perfect while I was in office and all I got to do was ride around in a chauffeured car and stay in a former queen's home. I mean, why would you run for office? And so people didn't, they didn't elect you to, um, they elected you precisely for this moment. 
and, and, and just like you train your athletes, it's precisely for that moment that they work so hard. And you shouldn't at that moment say, wow, you know, I wish that I was in better times. No, that's the time you want to be there. So anyway, that's kind Governor, of my expression. Governor John, that I, you know, I love hearing these insights from you. And I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. And you made such a big positive impact uh, in, in our state. And I just, you're someone that, that truly goes beyond the lines as well. So I want to really thank you again. Well, thank you for having me and thank you for all the flattery. You know? <laughs> Take care. Thank you, Governor John. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Governor John and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.